Tchaikovsky or in, you know, competing and there would be uh, contestants from Kazakhstan. Like, wow, they look just like Koreans. <laughs> they look so, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Oh, yeah, cause, and, and Mongols sort of have that look yeah, too. Yeah, 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 but um, especially Kazakhstan, it's like, they, they look Yeah, because so you could look like, you could, uh, like a Russian... One of yeah, those satellite yeah, countries. Yeah, it could be, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I, but I always wore a hat. People always know, oh, he's, he's the American. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's he's a fr- one from Los Angeles. <laughs> you <It's> know, <laughs> I wore shorts everywhere, tennis shoes, hat backward, polo shirt. You probably changed their whole <laughs> style profile. Yeah, uh-huh. uh-huh. okay. Oh. Did you already do your pen? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Frank Feta, and I'm the music director and conductor of the Culver City Symphony Orchestra. This year, because of the problems we've been having with COVID, we are doing, as many other organizations are doing, uh, all digital. So this wonderful experiment has given us a new format, and our first concert is with a friend whom I love dearly, who is a great world-class artist, and his name is Rufus Choi. Hello, Rufus. Hello, thank you for having me. And as always, it's just wonderful to see you and be with you and talk with you and thank you. share time with you. Thank you. Rufus and I have known each other maybe, what, 15, 20 years? Yeah. I'm not even sure at this point. You kind of, it all becomes a veil in your memory. Now, we are in an unusual and very beautiful spot, I might add. First of all, these paintings that you're seeing on the wall and I'm going to actually read the name. We're done by an artist named Kwanduk Baimuhanov. And he's from Kazakhstan. And uh, you can see the wonderful mood that are created by these artworks. And we thought we would sit ourselves in front of this one that's very wintry. And uh, you can see the snow and the, and the dead uh, branches with the fence and the, the blue sky trying to break through. And yet, some very intrepid person is trying to ride their bicycle through all of this. <laughs> and sometimes we feel that way when we're having issues like COVID. It feels like sometimes we're all struggling. But I must say that this project has been so incredible because of the great artistry of Rufus Choi. Thank you. We recorded this uh, separately, and uh, we will be putting that on a YouTube channel of the Culver City Symphony, and all of that information will be given to you in a separate context. Rufus, are you from California? Yes, I was born and raised here in Los Angeles. Okay. And um, left at 17 to New York and traveled abroad and then came back in 2007. So I was gone from 94 to 2007. Great, well we're glad you came back. Thank you, how can you not Love LA, right? <laughs> That's right. I travel the world, um, many different cities, and there is just not a place quite welcoming with the weather, and um, yeah, people too. A lot of my family and friends are here. So this brings me to a question: Is because I'm from a cold climate myself originally, and I remember oh, when I was going to conservatory and I'd have to get up in the morning and practice. I was so cold, oh, my, yeah. my hands. So you did a lot of study in cold climates, Germany and Russia. How did you deal with that? Well, um, I turned up the heater really high. (laughs) No, but I, you know, there were times where um, I remember, especially in New York, um, as you know, the buildings create these wind tunnels. And, um, but you know, I guess I was young, uh, covered my face up and uh, I was in, uh, I, I would dress in shorts and a t-shirt because you know it gets really hot in the practice rooms. Yeah, typically. So I, I would have this big jacket with a scarf all around and I would go to the practice rooms, take everything off and that's kind of how, how we did it. And Well, yeah. it, went, it must have worked. That was very successful to build, oh, the you. building of your <laughs> technique. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, you know, we would always uh, warm up and but uh, yeah, it was it was I love, I miss the cold weather. That's the one thing, the four seasons. You know, you have the leaves change, the winters, then spring just was so, you know, uh, welcoming and it had that kind of 
rebirth to it. Mm -hmm. So I, I do miss it, but you know, shoveling the snow, the, the snow is beautiful. It's after the snow melts. Isn't that the truth? Yes. All and, the tar and the, uh, the ashes and the stones. Uh, I know. <laughs> But you're leading a good life now here in Southern California. Yes. And if you want to get to other weather, you just drive to where the weather is. Exactly. You <laughs> just drive, you know, a half hour to the ocean. Exactly. Or the other way, you can go to mountains. Exactly. And it's, exactly. it's a really, it's a beautiful yeah. place to yeah. live. So what music, uh, let's talk about the music that you chose for our digital concert. Uh, wonderful pieces. Yes. Um, I myself have heard you play them both in the past. Right. And when you told me that you were doing that, I immediately snapped up this opportunity. Two really glorious pieces of music. Yes, they are. Um, Bach, do I need to start, <laughs> you know, talking about Bach. It's, he's the greatest. His mind, actually I was teaching a student earlier today and we were uh, covering the Bach fugue. And Bach is a composer that you just, as you fall in love with him, on a deeper level, you just realize his genius. His, he, he's just amazing, and he had 20 children on top of all of this. You know, he had um, the six partitas, he had 48 preludes and fugues, six English suites, French suites, uh, the, the Mass in B minor, you know, St. Matthew's Passion, cantatas, Brandenburg concertos, and how he had 20 kids, it's just, it's really... Well, I think that he had 20 kids because it balanced out his huge amount <laughs> of composing. He needed something for balance. Yeah, he, I don't know how he balanced But that. this particular piece, the, the Chacon, yeah. uh, tell us a little more about that. So it's a piece that I, I, I love. The, the, the drama in it, the intensity, yeah. and, you know, uh, it was the... Uh, Chacon movement of the, the second violin partita, partita yeah. and w it was transcribed by Buzzoni, who's a, a composer, composer yeah. pianist yeah. of the late rom uh, Romantic mm -hmm. era, and um, I, uh, this piece just, it goes to, it goes through everything, you know, after, um, it, supposedly, the, the story is that he composed after his, he found his wife uh, uh, had died. And so it takes you some, from very deep, uh, dramatic theme. And with all the different variations, it goes from lamenting to nervousness to warmth, love, hope, victorious, jubilant celebration, back to really your calmness, back to this kind of lang languid, uh, sadness, and then it ends um, in a very intense and um, uh, dramatic fashion. But it's really, it covers so much. It, uh, uh, what was it? Six measures of theme going through all the different variations. Um, and it covers so much of the human emotion and struggle that one would face after losing someone, someone that you love dearly. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly a dramatic piece. Uh, do you like uh, performing? Now, this is a very virtuosic piece, obviously, yes. and you've chosen for our concert two very virtuosic pieces. Yes. Do you like uh, also to go back to the Salus, to the original Bach pieces, the Preludes and Fugues, and the English and French Suites, etc.? Do you like to play those? Of course. <laughs> okay. It's Bach. The pure, the pure thing. Yes, yes, yes. and, yeah. and um, what I love about, and as I've grown as a musician, I love his, the way he, it makes so much sense horizontally and vertically, and, vertical, yeah. and, and his harmonic mm -hmm. progression, uh, he was so far ahead of his time, uh, um, and the beauty of how he uh, intensifies the harmony and then releases it in always a very um, surprising way, I think is what I find great about his music. It's very, very deep. Um, and then the second piece, if I may move on, <laughs> yeah, is sure. the Mussorgsky pictures, which I, um, so the story behind for me and my experience was I, I had uh, grown up studying with an American teacher 
uh, Bruce Sutherland, and then uh, my that's when I you were probably with him here when I first met you, perhaps. Is yes, we, I, I am. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. Perhaps, uh, yeah. and then um, then I went to um, a, a Armenian uh, Russian Konstantin Sarunian, and he he opened the door. He really opened the door to what music was really about. Um, I remember after the first lesson, I came out, um, you know, I was young then, I wasn't driving, and my mother, uh, as I just said, I feel like a whole world has opened to me. And it was so exciting because what he shared with me was tone, timing, and phrasing. These are three important elements that I share with as I teach. But you know, with a piece like Mussorgsky, it's all about color. It's all about each piece has a particular theme and color to it. And for me as a pianist, I always try to show these pictures in the most imaginable, uh, fantastic story idea. And so I start with the promenade, which is, you know, I imagine Mussorgsky is kind of a heavy set guy walking in a very stately and, and regal and proud. Um, and each promenade is different. It connects the two pieces. Right, that's why I think we wanted... Now, in, in the recital, you gave wonderful, wonderful uh, treatises on the music you were playing. But I think that's one of the uh, features I think especially uh, audiences like to hear, the fact that that theme yeah. recurs right. and it's almost as if they can put themselves into that museum yeah it's, it's you know right. and it's one of the reasons we chose this place today because mr by who i can never even say the name by muhanov mm -hmm. uh we're here in this gallery with these incredible paintings they're not the ones uh that musorsky of course uh, these are more, more modern but we thought that an artistic uh venue like this would be good for this particular uh, uh, interview. Um, do you, when you are listening uh, or learning, say, a piece like the, uh, uh, the Mussorgsky pictures, uh, have you listened to all of the orchestrations that have been written on the various ones? Because there's, there's like about four or five guys who have done them. Yeah, I, I listened to a few. I, I don't remember all the, the names, uh, the arrangements, but... I'm most familiar with Ravel. With the Ravel. Yes. And you can see there, there's so much more refinement in the Ravel. Yes. But I remember one time going to a concert at Hollywood Bowl, and they did like four versions. They did, I think it was three of, of one, and then finally ended up with the Ravel. Yeah. And the difference was really quite, quite stunning yeah. to have that music expressed uh, by a composer of that, of that level, you know. So it was... Um, Quite, quite. Well, I, I mean, yeah. you listen to different pianists perform the pictures, exactly. and it's, exactly. it sounds like a different exactly. piece. Yeah. 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 But I often, you know, I often when I describe, <laughs> I shouldn't perhaps, when I describe you as a pianist, I'll say, you've got to hear this guy. He's a monster. You know? <laughs> and, I mean, this is the sweetest guy imaginable, very, very but there's a real command uh, and firmness and um, purpose for you to be at the keyboard, you Thank know. You. And it's so, so apparent. It's just utterly, and you do other things too. I mean, and I, I know that you're a wonderful uh, pedagogue and are devoted to your students. Again, through the grapevine, it has come to me, this information. Did you have siblings that also played or? No, I have a younger brother, but he, um, yeah, he grew up playing um, all sorts of instruments. Uh, he's younger, about, about three and a half, four years, and I was uh, serious off as a piano, you know, pianist, young pianist, and so he, I think, went off with other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, as a younger, younger yeah. brother. Yeah. But, no. but your parents encouraged you, yeah. they saw what you, what, what, uh, your, your first remembrance of, uh, let's say, playing an entire piece on the piano, mm -hmm. what, what, what would be that, at what age? Well, I did my, um, and I, I bragged this, about this to all my students uh, to encourage them, but I did my first solo recital at 12. Right. My first orchestral work was at 10. 
uh, uh, concerto uh, experience. And so um, the experience of playing through a whole piece, uh, you know, honestly, I can't remember. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's good enough. I mean, we can stop there. I mean, if you've, if you've done a concerto performance at 10, at 10 yeah, yeah. I mean, we can look, suffice that to suffice it, suffice it to say that's pretty impressive. In that was the Haydn ways. concerto. Okay. And um, I remember coming back home when I had won this competition to play with an orchestra. And this is why these competitions are really not the competition themselves, but the the performance <laughs> with with an orchestra and with a conductor was a huge deal in my life because um, after having that experience, there was something in my mind that triggered me to you know share with my mother that I wanted to be a pianist and I knew I was going to be a pianist. It wasn't like I think I'm going to be a pianist. No, it was more of a feeling of you know I think this is what I was meant to do. And that was after uh, that experience. And so from 10 on, I was practicing many hours a day. <laughs> it was my life. It became my life. Well, you know, it's nice when someone um, develops that in, at such a young age. Um, and it's one of the things that we at the Culver City Symphony uh, like to encourage, obviously, because we had become quite enamored of our uh, youth competition and also in our adjunct uh, orchestra uh, the, at Marina del Rey we try to mix it up between very very experienced people and also those uh, uh, who are gaining a foothold in the uh, yes. in the music business and I think it thrills audiences to know that there is an attempt to constantly stoke the fire of classical music in one way or the other, you know? And I know that you're very, very interested and very passionate about that aspect of things, yes. that not are, only are we performers, but we're the very people that possibly can keep the flame going. Yeah, it's, it's our duty. It's, it, we have to. Um, music gives purpose to life. Um, and I teach, when I teach music, I, I see every note is important. Uh, you know, one note doesn't tell another note. Why is that note important? They're all beautiful. They're all important. They all have a role to play. And the most important thing about music that I teach is that you have to love music. You have to love your sound. You have to love what you say. Because if you don't love your music, don't expect your audience to love your music. And when you practice that, you practice the very essence of love in your heart, the capacity. And so, you know, when you give this gift to the young generation and they take that, what they're going to do is they're going to spread love. And that makes the world just a more beautiful place. It does. And you have certainly spent your life doing it. Um, and it's one of the reasons, once again, that when we began this idea of a digital concert series, yeah. uh, that I would, uh, I was honored that you accepted the yeah. plan and were willing to go along with it. Of course. Uh, this is an, a new venture that we're yeah. doing with the symphony, obviously. And we do think that even when we start performing live concerts again, that this may be uh, a way that we can continually increase our audiences and also that our audiences will have the opportunity of just being able to go to their phone and saying, you know, type in Culver City Symphony YouTube and s see some of the things that we're doing that are, that relate to our symphonic mission. Right. And that's the important thing yeah. because we are somewhat restricted at this point, yes. but you have been so wonderful in doing it and in getting all the cooperation of the various uh, people that were involved and I do want to say on screen I'm I'm just delighted to be working with another good friend on these projects uh, Ruslan Birikov who is uh, has been inestimably valuable <laughs> to the uh, art of these broadcasts and uh, again a very close friend and this you know, for me it's it's wonderful because 
though you always want to meet new people, right. there's a security in working with old <laughs> friends. It's, it's really, um, it's a small world here in LA and um, it, worldwide, but you know, we, we, how do I say, we have friends all over the place, but working with, you know, uh, friends is such a wonderful experience and, you know, there's a certain kind of like uh, camaraderie and hope in, 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 in working with, you know, friends and really so much well, fun. You know, from my point of view, and I mean, this is this shouldn't be my. You're the. I'm trying to interview, but I know. I think you feel this way. It's like well, after I finish a concert, no. whether it's piano, which I do a little bit of, and then conducting, which I do more of. Um, I feel that everyone who has heard that concert is, for a time, yeah. a new friend. Yes, yes. We've we've operated on the same wavelength for a while, right? And shared. They, they shared their ears with me, I shared yeah. my music with them, and you become amiable. There's an amiable and agreeable compact yes. between the two. It's love. It's love. It's love. Yeah. yeah, I think it's love. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, as hackneyed that word sometimes is, it is love, and it's so effective and powerful because not only do we love what we do, yeah. but we're playing great music. Yeah, we're playing great music. We're playing really we are bringing alive great art all yeah. the time. It's the best. You know? And it's the best. <laughs> what a calling, right? Yeah. What a calling. Yeah. Well, I must say once again, Rufus, you are a charmer. You're a great musician. Thank you. I love you and all of your family. Love you too. And Thank I you. am so grateful that you will be our first digital concert. <laughs> Thank you. And really, just same same goes for me and our the years of friendship and working with you I, I just have so many you know as as a as a pianist as a soloist to know that you're there right there to support my idea to push the orchestra and to love the music together at the highest level is the most beautiful feeling. That's so, sweet of you. you. There's a pop song because that's what friends are about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really sorry about I'm really sorry about that beetle that appeared on the stage at one of our concerts. That was when I was young. Well, what can you do? That's the uh, you know the beauty of outdoor you know, concerts. I don't right? know how to control beetles. <laughs> no, <you can't. laughs> but you know it, it, it's always a new twist to everything, you and know. I'll never forget that. <laughs> so anyway, Ruslan. I'm going to give a bump Rufus, to you. Rufus. Sorry, <laughs> Rufus. I'm going to give a bump to you. And I'm so happy that you uh, were here. I'm so happy that you chatted with us. And I'm so happy that you did our first digital recording. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you me. very much, Rufus Choi. Thank you. And to our listeners and to all of you who have heard our concerts and to the friends of Ruth, Rufus uh, Choi, who is very well known all throughout the United States, and especially here in Southern California, is a, a really valued member of the musical community here. Keep posted, we'll keep you posted when the premiere of the concert occurs, and then all following concerts on the YouTube channel of the Culver City Symphony. So my thanks to the Culver City Symphony, and once again to all of you in our audience, I'm Frank Feta, and we bid you adieu. Thank you.